I, we go on, uh, we go down to, we go down to uh, Lower Brule, Lower Brule, down there in that country, down the southern, southern, I mean the central part of, United, of uh, South Dakota. Everybody would bring their camp outfits. We'd go down there and we'd, and we'd and have a camp circle. It'd be a quarter of a mile across, teepees, wall tents, everything like this. And outside of that was the horses. We'd have the horses on the outside of that. Then beyond that was the sanitary facilities so that everything was in, in order. And all of us boys around 12 years old, we had a certain number of head of horses that we had to go take down to water near the creek, which where they had always camped near a nice creek. And then we would picket them or hobble them in a new place where they have fresh grass. And all those people would come down there, and we indeed were all related. We belonged to one another. So if a little child uh, happened to get away from its mother or something like that and ran down uh, and it was lost in this crowd, it was not lost because it belonged to that little child belonged to everybody. And, and, and it would, somebody would be sure it was fed. And if it was uh, cold, they'd put a blanket around it. And, and I can remember my grandfather my old grandfather, one time I, we went to a, uh, a, uh, a meeting such as that at, uh, uh, down in Pine Ridge. And so my little sister got lost and there was just a multitude of people. So here he comes, you know, he doesn't speak any good English. And her, her name is Jean. Her name is Jean. But he couldn't say Jean very well. He'd say, Jane, Jane, and he'd walk around, Jane. Then he, he stopped somebody in, in speaking in dialect. He said, I'm looking for my little granddaughter. He says, have you seen her? He says, she's, you know, four years old. Well, of course, there was all kinds of kids running around. And I had to question They said, it's nothing, T.P. Uh, uh, but because he said, your granddaughter is not lost. She's just someplace, but somebody's taking care of her. And so he went around and finally well, he found her way off on the other side of the camp, way maybe, maybe it's a quarter of a mile across the, to the other side. And speaking of the camp, why, in the center they had what they called Tipeokea. Tipeokea was where the council and all the doings of, this, of the tribe took pla takes place right there. And all the people come over there like that, and then people gather around and, and uh, the decisions for the tribe, the decisions for what's going to happen next year, or, the, or, or, or trying to, to, to take care of current things, was, that's where it was happening. So those are things that I believe that, that uh, when I look here at Hampton, when I look and see what you people are doing here, like this, I am lifted up. I'm 82 years old now, and and I'll be making the trip to the other side camp in not too many years. But I go feeling that at least here at Hampton University, you people here are doing something that I, I'm not, I don't see. I don't see it very often where I travel. And I've been, been invited to come around to do, go to different places. And I see these things, and I'm a little discouraged because it seems that people are kind of craw crawling on each other. Instead of helping somebody like this, they're stepping on top of him like that to get up. You know, and that's, uh, that, is not, uh, that is not the way our, our people, the old, old people lived. And of course, the, uh, the, uh, the old timers, and I believe that you can under you can see this wherever you go throughout the world, that generally, generally, the old people are regarded and cared for deeply because that's where the wisdom is. And our old our old timers, uh, we never went to school. I'm talking about the old days now. But we went to the we went to the elders to be, to be uh, 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 enlightened about life. 
because they had lived life. They had suffered pain. They also realized the joys and happiness of their existence. They realized that there was a time that they were going to go down, or not go down so much as to leave. I can never, I'll never forget, I used to run around with a little boy by the name of Winfield Loves War. Winnie and I were great friends, and ran across from the, where my, my grandfather lived, where I lived, ran across was a place called Chain Buttes. Chain Buttes was up there like this, and where the old, old-timers would still go up on top of those buttes to sing and to pray. And I can remember, oh, it was about 7 o'clock in the evening, it was there during, during the summertime, just beginning to dusk, just started to come, you see. And the sun had, had walked across and was going down over there. And I can remember up there like this, and Winnie and I were up there like this, and some old man came over there like that. We couldn't see him, but he was standing up on chain buttes. He was what they call Ichilon, that means a death song. He was singing up there. He knew that his, uh, his time was up, and so he went up on chain buttes there to spread his arms like this and to pay gratitude to his Creator, and those who could hear him paid a gratitude to those still living for what they had done for him, and to announce the fact that he would be leaving this world. And uh, it was kind of uh, uh, an experience for me that I'll never forget, because I thought of of uh, how we live our lives and how we uh, are in such a big hurry. Boy, 100 miles an hour, i got to put it to the floorboard. And I believe that that's one of the things that we're missing. I think that we have to take more time. We've got to turn to one another and love one another. Put your arms around each other. We don't have to have any secondary reason to do that to your wife or to your husband. Put your arm around them. So what's that for? Does it need to be for anything? Just because you're who you are. And that's the way our old Sioux people were. And they were not a bit backward about it. It was not a thing of manliness or anything like that. It was a matter of being a human being. And in those days, of course, they, they liked to kid the Sioux about the women doing all the work. That was pretty much true. But the men were out also defending their families. They were out hunting. They were out putting their lives on the line. And they had to go and defend their people against other tribal people who might have reasons to go against them. So those are things I believe that, that uh, to me, we've lost. Hopefully, and with a great bit of joy, in coming here to Hampton, I see that the seed, the seed has not been destroyed. The seed of those old ways is still here in Hampton. All that needs to be done is to be nourished, put, put down, back down under Mother Earth to be nourished to come. And we can all come back and, 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 and uh, uh, live in accordance to the feelings of those old timers and to enjoy what we have. Indeed, that little seed if, if we're not very, very careful, we, it can be extinguished. 